as a businessman, uh, there are pros and cons. He, he got concerned about what's been happening, particularly uh, the major impacts of President Trump's tariffs and trade wars with China, what they've done to the global economy. Giselda, would you like to uh, start this ball rolling? Well, uh, first, I hope that uh, upon the Biden uh, presidency, I was looking that we will, there will be a more stable, harmonious, uh, predictable relationship between uh, U.S. and China. Because uh, it's like in a family, if the two head of uh, state or the two parents are not fighting, it's easier to work in a peaceful environment. While if they're fighting, the policies will keep on changing and uh, our uh, working uh, environment will be very unstable. It's so hard to run a company or the business if the situation is not stable and predictable. Asia's prosperity depends upon stable trade and investment relations. The region has prospered relatively better than the other regions over the last several decades because it has a production sharing network. So parts and components are produced everywhere, including the Philippines. They're assembled in China. They go to Europe, the United States. Foreign investment comes. It comes not just to China, but it goes to all the other ASEAN countries, including the Philippines. So that served Asia very, very well. Uh, President Trump's tariffs have had a negative effect on everyone. So the focus was on the fact that China would suffer that it would not be able to export as much to the US. The great irony is that China's trade balance actually improved after the tariffs and improved in ways which people did not predict because China was able to export more to other places, including ASEAN. So China's exports to ASEAN soared. China's exports to Europe soared. China actually exported a lot more to Mexico, which was then re manufactured and sent to the United States. So today, after the trade war and the tariffs, China's trade uh, balance has improved. Now, ironically, America's trade deficits have gotten worse, okay? So when President Trump launched this, he thought that he would be able to improve his trade balance, that hasn't happened. But more importantly, uh, People have realized that the growth of the United States has suffered. Growth has suffered everywhere, actually. So no one wins in a trade war. So the, I think a key issue for President Biden, is he willing to reduce these tariffs? Because the, if he did, everybody would benefit, including other Asian countries. And I think this is the key issue. But he's unlikely to do so immediately. Because if he did immediately, people would think he's too soft on China. So the key issue is, what can China do to give Biden comfort or to give Biden an excuse to lower the tariffs? And I think that the, the question will then be, will President Biden revive what I call strategic dialogue discussions with China? And then will China signal something like, I will unilaterally cut my tariffs. I will liberalize American investment in China and send out a gesture. And if he did that, then Biden, I think, would actually be willing to cut tariffs. And I think everyone would be better off. Uh, George, I'm sure you have some thoughts on this. Yes, uh, as Mr. Yukon had said, uh, the US did not uh, benefit in terms of the goods trade. Uh, in, in 2019, it was almost the same. In 2020, uh, the US trade deficit grew substantially bigger. However, uh, the U China's uh, deficit with the US, the US deficit with China dropped by uh, about $80 billion, which means that uh, in that respect, they were able to hurt China from US trade basis. But again, uh, as pointed out by Mr. Yukon versus the world, China actually improved its uh, uh, surplus position. So the investments uh, after, and the investments that went out of China or are planned to go out of China uh, most of the companies are going to retain majority of their investments in China, but they will expand outside. And uh, wh what's happened is that the investments were not going to the U.S. The survey shows that less than 4% of these companies thought they were going to move it to the U.S. So they did not bring the jobs back to China. In the end, mm -hmm. it becomes a 
in this globalized world, maybe we're looking at competitiveness as the key thing, unless there's a successful decoupling, which is, remains also for the Philippines. So most of the world did not benefit from the trade war. There's a few very big winners like Vietnam, no? and we are just here at the edge that Thailand and some countries uh, became recipients of the investments. And the Philippines has the chance to do that if our build, build, build uh, works and the people uh, create the enterprises because the, enter the infrastructure is not enough. It's more than just physical infrastructure.